Hi, I'm Cindy Cloward with Riley Blake Designs, and today's project is a Dresden placemat. We all know the Dresden plate to be a traditional quilt block, but depending on the fabrics you use, it can look modern, contemporary, and traditional. Today, I'm going to be using classic Liberty fabrics. We all know Liberty fabrics to be eclectic and colorful and they all work together. And I have divided up this quilt block um, into quarters. And so it makes a fan on both sides, which allows the plate to shine in the middle. It is easier than you think to make. These are the supplies needed. So let me move this placemat out of the way. This is the beautiful Liberty fabric bundle I'm working with today. And this is the rotating mat that makes it so easy to cut up my pieces. You will notice I did my ground fabric is a linen fabric. It's a Riley Blake natural linen. I think it just works beautifully. I love to use linen on the tables. But you could also use a cream or a white color to make your fabrics or your pieces pop because the star of the show is this Liberty fabric. So I'm gonna put this fabric over here. Um, I am using Lori Holt's pie ruler. It is meant to make a Dresden plate, but she calls it her pie. And um, I think that's really clever. And it makes a finished size 14 inch Dresden plate. And so we're just going to cut up our Dresden fan on the side of our placemat. So I have found that I can cut up to four layers with my rotary cutter on this rotating mat. So I put my end here. So I have one less cut to make. And then I rotate it around, being careful not to let it shift when you're cutting. Sometimes you need to just trim just ever so slightly. Now I have um, a fat quarter bundle, and so I would open this up on the fold, and you do have a couple of other pieces you can get out of this bundle. And you can organize it enough to get maximum amount of your Dresden pie pieces or your Dresden pieces out of your cut. So you lay them out now, and you can um, give them a good press. Sometimes that's the easiest. So you can run the length of yours, and you can do that all along. Sometimes when I'm in a hurry, I just do a finger press the length of the piece. Now I tend to start on this side, the fold side. I've seen it both ways, but I like to start on the fold side, back stitch, and finish off the end and just chain my pieces together. Okay, you've had all your Dresden's chain pieced. Just clip the stitching in between. Now your next thing you're going to do is press this seam. And you're gonna open it up and you're gonna line it up with the center of your, of your, your piece. So you've centered that stitching. Okay, so now we have all of our pieces pressed, ready to go. These are all my extras that I've previously done. This is where you're gonna get the little point in your Dresden. You're gonna flip it inside out. Usually I put my finger on the end, just like that. Pop it out with my finger. 
but I love a good turning tool. This was designed by Bev McCullough. Look how cute it is. It's got this little flamingo on the end. You can finger press it. I do take it to the machine after I've got them all popped, I take it to the iron rather, after I've got them all popped out and give them one more good press. Again, I put my finger in the end, pop it out. and give them a good press, making sure it's still centered on that center mark. I'm gonna press these all at once. Save time. Okay, now I've just added it to my others here. Got lots of fabrics to choose from. They are ready to go. This is the fun part. Putting out your pieces, pieces of pie, as Lori Holt would say. But there are Dresden pieces. I'm gonna move this out of the way. Onto our top of our placemat. Now the bottom placemat, you saw in the supplies that I requested a lightweight interfacing fusible on one side. I've already adhered that to my bottom piece. So that's all ready to go, but the top piece does not have any fusible interfacing and that's what I'm going to sew my pieces on and applique on. So you've got this laid out. And you can just choose your favorite pieces to go in the corners. See what you like. Again, that's what's so fun about Liberty. It doesn't have to match perfectly. You mix and match, make it your own, what you like. You can make it for holidays, everyday use. I'm not gonna put two pinks together. We'll just try a couple other colors. I think I'm gonna Add one more of these over here. Let's see. I quite like that. That looks nice. Now we're going to sew our fans together, or part of our Dresden. And this is how it works. You do right sides together. You line up that corner just like that. And you can use, you pin it. And you do two at a time. Okay, let's take these to the machine and sew. Right, you can bring that back in. I'll just bring in my cutting mat. And you can lay them back out again. Actually, let's give a good press. Opening up your seams. Now a reminder uh, that I do do a quick back stitch. You only do it at the top of your Dresden. You don't have to do it at the bottom. You can just sew off the bottom. Okay, let's bring it back. Line it back up. Oh, I kind of switched positions, but that's okay. Still works. And then you're going to do your final stitch to sew the two sections together.
right, we'll just clip in between there. Give it a quick press. Okay, put them on the sides just like this. They fit perfectly in the corners. And if not, just give them a little stretch. Okay, now I like to just do a quick pin on each side so they're pinned in place. You can also use applique glue, but I do like to pin so I know exactly that they're perfectly, and then I do a, both. I use applique glue and I pin as well. I just do a little dot on the top of my Dresden. I'm gonna take this bottom piece off. We'll need that in a minute. let that sit for a minute and it's ready to be appliqued. Get your needle and thread all prepared and a lot of times I get questions about what color of thread you use. If you had large contrasting pieces then you might want to switch your thread out, but usually I try and go with a neutral thread, slightly lighter, and it works really well, especially with this classic Liberty colors. Um, it's gonna work really well and you'll hardly see my stitches. You could take it to the machine, use an invisible thread, maybe a nylon thread, or even a very light colored thread, and do a, a small zigzag around and finish the applique on your machine. But I do like the look of hand applique. So I'm going to hand applique both sides. time to assemble your placemat. If you wanted to, it would be a good time to base stitch the sides, um, but since I've appliqued the top area and, we, and I'm going to pin it very well, I'm going to skip that step. So you take your bottom piece of the placemat, which has the fusible interfacing on it, and that's going to be, the fusible side is going to be on the bottom. Now right sides together, you're going to pin down the two pieces. And I'm going to pin, make sure you've got all those layers and they're all lined up. Now, if your squares aren't perfectly square together, this is the time to trim it. But be very careful if you're trimming your Dresden pieces. You don't wanna cut into those prints. Okay, I have all four sides pinned, except I'm leaving an opening about three inches to start and stop so I can turn my placemat right side out. Let's take it to the machine and sew. Okay, we've sewn around all our edges. Now we're gonna turn it right side out. Let me first just trim up my corners to give me crisper corners. Part of my little Dresden stuck out there. I'm just gonna trim that off. Shift it a little bit on this side. We're just gonna trim that up a little bit. Okay. 
Okay, inspect it, make sure all your sides were caught. Looks good. Okay, once your placemat is right side out, grab your turning tool or chopstick, anything to push out your corners. Give a nice little point to them. Be careful not to poke through your fabric. That's why I like this tool so much. It has the perfect point to it so it doesn't push too hard against your corners. Take a look. All your edges look good. Now you're gonna roll this under, give everything a good press, and do a fourth inch top stitch around the entire edge of your placemat. Let me add a couple pins. As you can see, pressing is a really important part of finishing this placemat. One last press. Now it's ready for the final touch. And your placemat is finished. One little tip is I don't backstitch when I start, but I do go over my stitches at the end and do a small backstitch so you don't have a bulk of thread. And now it's all ready to dress up your table. Don't you love a little pop of color? And it's just that easy to make a Dresden placemat.